Welcome to Wembley Stadium for the Division One playoff final of the year 2000. It's Barnsley against Ipswich Town. The winners are promoted to the Premier League next season and that could mean around £10 million in extra revenue. It's Barnsley's first ever visit to Wembley in their 113-year history. Their fans have had to wait a long time to come here and just in time too, Wembley's demolition workers move in in the coming months. So this is a last playoff final to be played here for almost three years when the new rebuilt Wembley will be ready. So a check on the team news and Barnsley spring a surprise to include on loan defender John Curtis in this starting 11. Curtis is hoping to make a permanent move from Manchester United. In attack it's Neil Shipley and Bruce Dyer and a bit of history here. The same two strikers played for Crystal Palace at Wembley in 1997 in a playoff final and were on the winning side. It switches James Scowcroft has failed a fitness test on a damaged hamstring. It was thought that the Dutchman Martin Reusser would come in, but instead George Billy's opted for Jermaine Wright, who plays wide right in midfield. There's a recall too for John McGreal, the former Tranmere defender, who's in the team at the expense of Wayne Brown. So who's going to win today? Well, the bookies have gone for Ipswich who are renowned for their superior passing game. But in the last hour, incredibly looking at these pictures, it has rained with biblical fury, and the game could be decided by the team that has the energy to master these strength-sapping conditions. It's very wet underfoot. Put simply, the rain that we've had in the last hour will favour Barnsley. Well, these playoff finals are usually high-scoring, dramatic games with last-minute goals and likely goal scorers if you like your football laden with goals thrills and spills pull up your chair and enjoy the next 90 minutes and it could be even more than that because uh, the playoffs have to be decided today and if necessary that will mean extra time and possibly even penalties you may recall a couple of seasons ago we had an incredible game that ended 4-4 between Charlton and Sunderland and that was decided on penalty kicks. Well, the most surprising event of the last half hour is the change in the weather. Because at half past two, 30 minutes ago, we had the most terrific cloud burst. The pitch is wearing a little bit thin in places. We've had the Division 3 playoff final on Friday. On Saturday, it was England against Brazil in a friendly international here. Yesterday, we had the Division Two playoff final when Gillingham overcame Wigan. Again, each day has been accompanied with very, very heavy rain. And today, it's the biggest of the three playoff finals, Barnsley against Ipswich. It's hard to estimate the amount of money these clubs will receive if they ascend to the Premier League. Charlton and Manchester City have already gone up automatically. Wembley Stadium looking a real picture this afternoon. More or less full to capacity. I made way, my way through the crowds here on the underground system of London. They were in fine spirit. Both sets of supporters mixing in very good humour indeed saw one gentleman that had a scale model of Wembley Stadium perched on his head in the shape of a hat another had a t-shirt which read it's George Burley's Wembley George Burley the manager of Ipswich Town and the conjecture is almost at an end the final domestic game of the English season is about to get underway Every cup and every medal has been handed out, but one question remains. Will it be Barnsley or Ipswich ascending to the Premier League at the end of this match? We have blue skies overhead. The rain has stopped right on cue. The referee for today's game is Terry Heilbron from Newton Aycliffe.
quick check of the watch. It'll be Ipswich Town to get the Division 1 playoff final underway. Ipswich making their third Wembley visit. They won the FA Cup here in 1978 and then lost 5-0 to Nottingham Forest in the Charity Shield three months later. And a foul by David Johnson on the Barnsley goalkeeper, Kevin Miller, in the opening few seconds. And David Johnson, who's dyed his hair specially today, might have damaged his shoulder in this tumble. Fell very awkwardly indeed, you can see there. A little bit of over-enthusiasm in the opening 20 seconds of the game. And that could be a big blow to Ipswich Town if it is going to be a serious injury to David Johnson. He really is their prime candidate in terms of scoring goals. That's over the head of Magilton. It's Shipley now for Barnsley. Come on, played forward by Darren Bernard in towards Dyer. It's a good ball as well. Shipley's there. Jermaine Wright has it now for Ipswich Town. Barnsley making their first ever Wembley appearance in the club's 113-year history. Not many clubs left who've never played at Wembley. This is Venus now helping it forward. Shipley with his back to goal. One back though, Holland finding Croft. Right, Magilton steams in trying to win the ball. Jermaine Wright, a surprise inclusion in the Ipswich Town starting 11 today. He hasn't featured in the last four games, but in today. Johnson came off the uh, Barnsley player last. Darren Bernard, it's a throw into Ipswich Town despite my two puzzled expressions. There's George Burley, who twice played here for Ipswich. Goalkeeper's ball, the goalkeeper's going to have to be uh, a bit vigilant this afternoon because it has rained, the top will be very greasy and maybe one or two of the kicks will be disappointing as well as Kevin Miller just showed there. Venus to take the throw to Magilt. Tony Mowbray now for Ipswich Town. Trying to pick out Marcus Stewart. Dyer. Good header by Stewart. Magilton, who scored a hat trick in the semi finals to dispose of Bolton Wanderers. Mowbray flicked on by Stewart. It's a dangerous ball. Keith Brown allows the ball to run to Kevin Miller. This is Ipswich Town's 11th game in the playoffs. They've only won two of those, both at Portman Road. Their playoff record is not clever, to say the least. Shipley heads it on. Dyer's there for Barnsley. Plenty of support to arriving. Appleby. Clever ball to pick out Tinkley, but he's dispossessed. And here comes a counter-attack. Holland now for Ipswich. No foul by Tinkler. Jilton, Clapham, Stewart, might come to Jamie Clapham again. Good early pressure here by Ipswich Town. Clapham to take the throw. Stewart lays it off. Clapham again. From Curtis, the player on loan from Manchester United with that sliding challenge. He to be playing it right back today. Holland, he said he's always dreamed since being a boy of playing at Wembley. This is his first visit today. Bernard now for Barnsley. McGreal helped that ball forward. And it will be a goal kick. Craig Hignett, who seems to have had a rather dramatic haircut since the playoff semi finals. The 
He won the Division One title with Middlesbrough. And there's Dave Bassett, who's enjoyed seven promotions in his 20 years as a manager. With Wimbledon, Sheffield United and Nottingham Forest. It was written in one English paper this week. If you want to have your team promoted out of Division One, call for Dave Bassett. They're beaten to the ball. Curtis. Dyer, who's got terrific pace here. He's pulled it back. Sorry, that ball was out. Tinkler. Number two inquiry looks at the referee who didn't uh, indicate the ball had gone out of play. Jim Jilt now for Ipswich Town. Bernard. Hignett. Oh, what a chance! It's a goal! Craig Hignett scores for Barnsley after just five and a half minutes of the game. What a shot by Hignett. And the goalkeeper of Ipswich Town, Richard Wright, one of the best in the business, completely deceived by that. The ball struck his back and ended up back in the net. Here's Hignett. Goalkeeper beaten by it. It came off his wrist, perhaps. What a start for Barnsley. Oh, right, desperately unlucky. What a well-hit shot there. It was dipping all the while. And Wright was completely beaten. I warned you there might be a glut of goals in this game. Well, we've got an early one, and it's gone to Barnsley. There will be some doubt whether that goal is credited to Craig Hignett or perhaps an own goal because it was certainly on its way out after it hit the crossbar. Go to see this gentleman here. The ball was going back into play before it struck the goalkeeper. Chilton. Here's that goal once again. Look at the space here for Hignett. And that one timed at what? 56 miles an hour. Dyer. All the options to his left. Shipperley. Well, so many times Ipswich, Ipswich have been written on. They were. Three times behind in the playoff semi finals against Bolton. And once again, they're going to have to come from behind to reach the Premier League. Free kick now to Ipswich Town. Can they reply immediately? Mowbray will have some uh, sprinting to do here. He's done well to turn the ball back towards Matty Holland. Venus scoops it back in. Appeals for handball. Not well, given. Clapham! Well, it would have been better for Clapham to arrive on his left foot. Keep it going, boys, is the message from George Burley. Don't get your heads down. And this is probably the best attack Ipswich have had in the opening ten minutes of the game. with a clearance what an afternoon to be honest as far as the neutrals concerned an early goal just peps up the game because the team who've conceded are bound to come out now and try and attack and maybe leave behind some of their defensive stations a 
think it's fair to say Barnes, they have a bit of a reputation of having a glass jaw. They score a lot of goals, but my goodness, they concede a lot as well. Shipperley. Bruce Dyer now. Most important thing for Ipswich is not to concede again. Chettle takes over here for Barnsley. Kevin Miller. Lent in eight goals against Ipswich Town this season. 6 1 and a 2 0. But it's Barnsley who have the upper hand. This is Tinklin now for Barnsley. And there's an offside flag on the far side. It's going to be a free kick to Ipswich Town. Ipswich Town, playoff semi-final losers for the past three seasons. But this time they've made it to Wembley. And they're going to have to shrug aside that early disappointment to the goal as Jermaine Wright attacks for them now. Johnson. Shipperley. Look how deep Barnsley are sitting. Just inviting Ipswich to attack. Venus. Jilton helped on towards Johnson, but Barnsley have it all sorted out. And there's the goal scorer, Craig Hignett. He played twice here for Middlesbrough. I wonder how important that goal will be. Long way to go. Stewart, Jermaine right now for him switch down. Magilton. Hignett. Two call for the cross. Right. Superbly done. Right again. Clear by Chettle. Venus lost out there to Dyer, and Dyer sprints forward here for Barnsley. Only Shipley up in support. And Jamie Clapham did well just to arrest that Barnsley raid. Curtis with the throw here for Barnsley. Shipley. to Venus White Chettle stepped out of defence to win it it's Dyer now he's thinking about having a shot from range as well Jamie Clapper Jim Magilton Stewart lost the ball rather easily, it has to be said. Shipley now. It was another good effort, it was on target by Neil Shipley. Looking for goal number 16 this season. And once again, Ipswich Town guilty of backing off here and just inviting the Barnsley man to shoot on sight. That's exactly what he did. Chance once again for Barnsley. George Burnley knows his team haven't really got going so far. They are now faced with a wall of red shirts. Johnson. A jilt. Venus. Stewart. Venus. Lovely football by Ipswich, but once again, got clear this time by Keith Brown. Which Batman have got very little to do at the moment. They just have to quell the odd counter attack. Tinkler picking out Curtis. 
Careful headed by Mowbray. Ipswich beginning to get a stranglehold on the game, but they are a goal behind. We've had quarter of an hour of the match. Holland. Matt Holland, the Republic of Ireland international, who's coming off for international duty after today's game. Clapham. Real helped it forward to Johnson. And here came it switch again. Venus. Clapham. Tinkler just gets it away. It really is a story of Ipswich's superior passing style against. Barnsley's determination to get plenty of bodies behind the ball. It's made even more difficult for Ipswich by the fact Barnsley have got that early goal. Venus. Chettle gets it clear, only as far as McGilton. McGreal's free over that far side. McGreal's cross, Stewart's in there. Didn't really make any sort of contact on the ball. This is Marcus Stewart, the club's record signing who did all he could to get on the end of this one. Scored here in the 95 playoff final for Bristol Rovers. There's Jim McGilton who'd love to get his name on the score sheet again. He has popped up with some important goals of late. Just joined us, you're watching the Division One playoff final from Wembley Stadium in England. Dave Bassett's Barnsley, a goal up against Ipswich Town. Shipley. Matilton scrapping for the ball but losing out to Appleby. Tinkler. Stewart. There's a Barnsley player lying injured. Inside the Ipswich half of the field. The referee is going to stop play. It was Tinkler who collided with Jermaine Wright. And Eric Tinkler, the South African international, is going to receive a bit of medical treatment here. I think the problem's a uh, bruised ankle. Steve Chettle going to take a bit of a blow to his face. That's how it happened. Steve Chettle, the former Nottingham Forest defender, who joined Dave Bessett at Barnsley when Bassett moved to the club. Jones should be the keeper's ball good catch by Miller he was falling backwards that's exactly what you, you want your goalkeeper to do when you're under a bit of pressure Jermaine right now Jones by Keith Brown. So far, the Barnsley goalkeeper Kevin Miller hasn't had that many crucial saves to make so far. 
despite the fact that which have enjoyed the greatest share of possession. Tinkler oh, through towards Dyer. Barnsley break, they break so quickly and so adventurously as well. Majilt, McGreal. And an extra, you're going to have to do better than that to unstitch the Barnsley defence. Which has been tailored very nicely by Dave Bassett. Chettle. Just strikes me, Barnsley might feel they've weathered the storm after going a goal up, which came back strongly. And very little to show for their efforts so far. We've reached the 20 minute mark of the first half. And that special dyed hair of David Johnson hasn't brought any luck so far. Marcus Stewart. Oh, there was a free kick spotted by Terry Harbron. He didn't play the advantage. Oh, he's getting a bit of a ticking off from uh, Jim Jilton, and now Ipswich are going to make a change here. They've obviously got an injury. It's Richard Naylor coming on. And David Johnson limps out. Oh, a big blow this for Ipswich Town because David Johnson scored goals for fun this season. And I suspect it's that shoulder injury incurred in the opening few seconds of the game, which is done for him. And Ipswich Town are now going to play with a makeshift striker, Richard Naylor, who's after this ball and unable to get it ahead of Kevin Miller. I'm convinced that injury happened in the opening few seconds of the game. worth pointing out that David Johnson did damage his neck in the semi-finals against uh, Bolton. That's a super ball. Super piece of defending as well. Stewart was after it, but the Barnsley door slammed shut. And Morgan got it back to his keeper. So, Ipswich have lost a goal. They've lost... A very, very good striker as well. And at the moment, the sun is shining on the team from South Yorkshire. Foul by Dyer, free kick to Ipswich. Ipswich Town finished third in the division this season. A couple of points behind Manchester City, who went up in second place. They vowed to ca carry on fighting to a possible playoff final. That's what they've achieved, but they haven't really got going so far. Curtis. Tinkler. Appleby. Curtis. It's a lovely ball. Hignett. He's looking to set himself again for another shot, and he almost scores again. He's looking for a corner kick, but he almost got another goal here. And that could well have made it very hard indeed for Ipswich Town to come back. That was a great shot by Craig Hignett. He was having an exceptional game for Barnsley, running the midfield and offering a threat very much in the Barnsley attack. Jilton tries to pick out Stewart. Richard Nano was after it, but nothing doing.
Dyer. Shipley. Magnets on the back post. And back here to Curtis. is that goal by Greg Hignett which ricocheted back unfortunately off Richard Wright goalkeeper who's having to go to the uh, Euro 2000 championships as third choice England keeper this is a big game for him he wanted to make that sort of forced error Nader Wright Croft. Holland. An attempt on goal by Matty Holland. And again, look how many red shirts are behind the ball. It's so difficult here for Ipswich Town. This is Clapham. Stewart. And Chettle taking no chances whatsoever. Just put his size nine boot behind the ball. Attempt by Holland. And the upshot of all that. There's a corner kick now to Ipswich Town, which Jim Magilton will take. Ipswich a goal behind, remember. Clapper. Magilton. 1 1. And it's the old fella, Tony Mowbray, who's equalised for Ipswich. Powerful back post setter. And George Burley's team are right back in it. Tony Mowbray, who's never played at Wembley before today, on his first appearance as a 36-year-old, the first team coach, scores a quite superb header. by example there and his header was too powerful for Kevin Miller and those glum Ipswich faces are now bathed in joy he's waited a long time to play here and then pops up with a goal. Well, I go back to right at the start of our uh, transmission and said we might have plenty of goals. I would suggest that we have not seen the last goal of the afternoon. Venus, Stewart, it's a corner. Mowbray's gone forward again. That goal he scored was only his second of the season. And I'm sure Barnesville keep a close sign in this time. Mowbray ready to make his run into the box. Here he comes again, and the goalkeeper got it clear. Clapham. He's caught very late on a challenge from Appleby. This is Magilton. Venus. And it's going to be a throw. to the uh, Ipswich players asking the referee Terry Harbron if he saw this challenge on Clapham and that should have been a yellow card Ipswich have already lost one player through injury David Johnson but despite that they have equalised through Tony Mowbray with this towering header
Mowbray with a header again. At the start of the season, Ipswich Town asked Tony Mowbray if he'd occasionally play in the uh, first team if there were any emergencies. Well, he's played 39 times. He's already signed a contract for next season as well. I wonder if he'll be playing in the Premier League. Mowbray. Right. McGreal. And McJilton. Naylor. Corner. Ipswich have looked a lot more lightning. Lively, rather, since uh, number nine, David Johnson, went off injured. Corner kick to Ipswich Town, who really are turning the screw now on Barnsley. Mowbray's ready again. Just half cleared the ball. And it's going to be another corner kick. And Jim says, come on, attack the near post. It's incidentally the 27th meeting of the teams. It's which have won most of those. 14. But the teams are level at the moment. 1-1. One, one. That one flicked on. And there was uh, no offside against Richard Naylor. Naylor had a very good uh, opportunity here. Barnsley tried to play him offside. I think it was Appleby who played him on. And that would have counted had it been on its way in. Babski, the official on the near side, didn't raise his flag. Last time George Burley played at Wembley, he was in the colours of Scotland, who lost to England in May 1979. Of course, that fixture rumoured to be ready to be re uh, added to the calendar. The National Football Canada. Right, lovely ball, Stewart, Holland, took a deflection, score might go in. And by hook and by crook, and the odd intervention from Keith Brown, Barnsley survived. Any one of three Ipswich players could have scored here. Great save by the goalkeeper. Right, and it's going to be uh, Kevin Miller's ball. Well, that was a terrific piece of defending by young Keith Brown, former Blackburn player, and by goalkeeper Kevin Miller, who saved with his legs there to deny it, which the second goal for them. And there's now ten minutes to go. You won't be surprised to learn there's never been a nil-nil score between these two teams. Tinkler, another oh, disappointing shot by Eric Tinkler, whose contract expires this summer, he's rejected a one-year deal, and could be on his way out of the club, a lot could depend on whether Barnsley go up. Dave Besson a lot more animated now than on his side, we're leading by goal to nil. Magilton. Jermaine Wright, who did well to control the ball, four waiting for the cross. Appleby gets it back to Miller. Mowbray with another great header, he's having a towering game at the back for Ipswich Town. Tony Mowbray as well as scoring that all-important goal for Ipswich. Clapham.
Clapham. Holland's made a run down the middle. Clapham now for Ipswich. Rebounds off Chettle. Jermaine Wright. Mowbray. Clapham. One back by Chettle. On to look a little bit deflated now. Magilton. Got clear by Chris Morgan, who is voted the club's player of the year for this season. Gary Croft to take the throw in now for Ipswich Town. Nine minutes to half time. Richard Naylor had that effort on goal. Really troubled goalkeeper Kevin Miller too much. But uh, as well, talking about this incredible header by Tony Mowbray. Some lovely stories. Never played here in his entire career. Sometimes players get the opportunity to play four or five times in their career at Wembley. Well, Tony Mowbray must have thought his chance had gone at 36 years old, but to come here and score must be uh, all your birthdays and Christmases rolled into one. Mark Venus. No break. Real. Stewart. Clapham. A peculiar ball by Jamie Clapham and a rather bemused look by Marcus Stewart. Who scored on his hit switch debut against Barnsley. But is one of the longest serving managers now in the country. And a very good job to turn Ipswich into a team that is ready to go up. Some might argue that they were ready to go up a couple of seasons ago, but the last three seasons they've missed out on a playoff final place. Now they're very much here. Curtis. Clapham. Came off Appleby, corner kick to Ipswich. They've won a few corners now in the last 10 or 15 minutes. And more importantly, they've scored from one. Six minutes to go to half-time, it's 1-1. Magilton with the corner. Settle now for Barnsley. It's been a while since they mounted an attack. Here's Hignett. Not clear by Mowbray. Magilton. And now Edfridge can break. It's two against two. Stewart. Naylor to his left. It's a great tackle. Edfridge and their attack strangled at its inception. side his influence on this uh, game has just uh, eased off slightly oh, 
Morgan. Dyer, there was a push there by Venus. Free kick to Barnsley and a muted cheer from the Barnsley end. So Morgan makes his way forward. Bernard stands over the ball, as does Appleby. Bernard. Well held by Richard Wright, he'll be delighted to have made some sort of save. He's been vastly underemployed for most of the half, and it's which break now. Croft. The Jilton to his right. Slipped and it came off Mailer and Barnsley have it now. Too much going on upfield for them. Shipperley couldn't even hold the ball in play. Magilton. So one of these two teams could. Just grab a goal before the interval, it would be a terrific psychological boost for them. Naylor was not going to get that. Started life as a central defender. Richard Naylor. Wanted to striker. He didn't think he'd be playing in this game or involved so soon, but that's the way it went. Enjoying the sunshine now, but hopefully the showers which we had in the hour leading up to kick off have not returned. Stewart Holland. Oh, that's a useful interception by Chettel, but going back by Ipswich. And here's Jim Matilton now for Ipswich Town. Croft took it delightfully. Has McGreal behind him. Got clear not too emphatically by Brown, but Barnsley put it clear through Bernard. The minutes of the opening 45 left. Naylor. Croft. Naylor. Right. Magilton. was by Matty Holland. It's taken Ipswich Town about 25 minutes just to play the sort of football they're capable of. Their goals certainly gave them a lot of encouragement. And now Dave Bassett already thinking about his half-time team talk. Thoughts that this would be a very one-sided game in Ipswich Town's favour really have disappeared. Shipperley. Hegnitz. Should be the goalkeeper's ball. He's taken Ignitz out. And the referee has set a penalty. Oh, I thought that Richard Wright was very late going down for that one. Now. It was not a foul. The slow motion replay suggests Craig Hignett has duped the referee here because there was no contact between Wright and Hignett. And Craig Hignett still the object of several Ipswich Town players' fury here, but Terry Heilbron has indicated a penalty kick. What a time to win a penalty just before the break. It's Darren Bernard for Barnsley. It's 1-1. Wright saves! What a save by Richard Wright!
a quite superb stop. Well, some will feel that justice has been done now because it clearly wasn't a spot kick and Wright has saved Ipswich Town. That could well have booked his place in the England squad for Euro 2000. The Ipswich fans are on their feet applauding their goalkeeper. What a crucial time to make a save. And the scoreline remains one apiece. Right. Curtis helps it back to his goalkeeper, Miller. You can see what a well-struck penalty it was. Quite brilliantly stopped by Richard Wright. What was the Barnsley fans' reaction to his save? His hero is David Seaman, although he's often been likened to Peter Shilton. And there's the half-time whistle. Craig Ignett gave Barnsley the ideal start just six minutes in, when the ball ricocheted back off the crossbar and into the path of Ipswich goalkeeper Richard Wright, who could do absolutely nothing about it. The goal has been credited to Hignett, but then a towering header by Tony Mowbray, only his second goal of the season, drew Ipswich level just before the half-hour mark, and then a contentious penalty decision, which went Barnsley's way. There's that goal scored by Hignett, look at his delight. This cross by Magilton, powerfully headed home by Tony Mowbray. Ipswich had a very good period of the game after that. And then this penalty decision. The spot kick was awarded Barnsley's way, but what a save. Barnsley have stood toe-to-toe -to -toe with Ipswich Town. It really has been an incident-filled opening 45 minutes. Let's hope for more of the same in the second half. The half-time score in the Division 1 playoff final is Barnsley 1, Ipswich Town 1. June, and it's hotting up on C7 Sport Channel 12, AFL. <laughs> The battle for the flag continues in the 2000 Premiership. Soccer. What a goal! The final series of the National Soccer League, including the Grand Final Live. Rugby League. How good is this? Join the boys on NRL Winners for all the latest league news. Basketball. Holy moly! The Boomers and Opals clash with Russia, and the world slam down under. Cricket. It's got in. England take on Zimbabwe and the Windies, and catch English County One Day Action. Goal. And something again puts him off. We hit the fairways for the European PGA and LPGA tours. Netball. All net. The Commonwealth Bank Trophy continues. Wrestling. Oh, this is going to be ugly. We get up close and personal with the WWF Superstars. Whoa! See more sport in June on C7 Sport Channel 12. It's the biggest bank robbery ever attempted. Well, I've been planning this job for two years. And he desperately needs an architect to complete the job. Why are you so persistent with me? Because you're the man I need. It's an ingenious plan to get inside an impenetrable bank vault. All right, that's it. We're going in to have a look. I've never assumed there's been a fault in the system. That's the loophole. Martin Sheen, Albert Finney, Loophole. Premieres Monday, 8.30 on Movie Greats. Oak Hill, 1995. The 18th was a scene of gripping the effort. Points by now priceless. Fred Couples needed to get up and down into for a possible half with Ian Woosner. Couples duly hold, leaving Woosner, who's yet to win a Ryder Cup singles with this 15-foot putt for victory. It was not to be. Another Ryder Cup moment.
Welcome back to our coverage of the Division One playoff final from Wembley Stadium. It's Barnsley won it, which Town won at half time. The last 12 games between Barnsley and Ipswich have produced 38 goals. That's prior to today, averaging three a game. We almost had three in the first half, had it not been for an outstanding penalty save by Richard Wright, the Ipswich Town goalkeeper. There's been a lot of conjecture and debate at half time whether it was a penalty. There was certainly a collision between Wright and Craig Higner to steam through on goal. But was it whether it was deemed to be deliberate foul? An accidental foul or just contact remains academic now it was a penalty kick and with blue skies over North London it'll be Barnsley to restart the game that will be in Hignett stand over the ball Barnsley who have been in the playoff position since early November till the end of the season very strong end of season as well. The team took a short break in Portugal just before the playoffs began. Some feel it's really done them a pair of good. And we're underway once again. No substitutions for either team at the break. And incidentally, the thought is very much now that uh, the opening goal of the match will go down as an own goal against Richard Wright. And the reason that is is because the ball was travelling away from goal when it struck him and he was re-diverted back into his goal. That's the uh, technical ruling for what an own goal consists of. If it was going in any way, it's not actually classed as an own goal. I hope that clears it up as Ipswich Town tried to score an authentic goal here. Not like that. who spent 18 of the last 19 years in this division looking to get out for only the second time they spent one very brief year in the Premier League two seasons ago after they were promoted and finishing as runners up to Bolton in 1997 can they get back there right and the Jilton heads the ball on by Hignett, Shipperley, nothing wrong with that challenge, for Jilton, plenty wrong with that pass, Bernard, Dyer's onside here for Barnsley, who threatened again, the Cavalry are just about arriving now, Bernard, lovely turn, Stewart, as Ipswich break forward now, it really is one of those end-to-end -end games, the neutrals absolutely love. That's fun on the supporters' nerves as they see their side on the score and then almost concede. And McJilton has some space here for Ipswich Town. Launched a shot at goal and hit Chettle. And this is Venus. Switch offside here, just a uh, nice time run. And Marcus Stewart. One of those days where the fans don't know whether they want a cooling half time drink or a brolly. The sun very much shining now. Dyer flicks the ball on towards Shipley. Slowly makes his way into the box. It's a throw into Barnsley. Which Curtis will take. Curtis is currently on loan from Manchester United. He's had a word with Alex Ferguson about the possibility of playing for Barnsley in the Premier League next season. And apparently Alex Ferguson said he'd give his blessing for Curtis to move permanently to Oakwell if Barnsley are promoted.
was a dash of the unexpected about these playoff finals. And the first half lived up to the playoff finals we've had over the past 10 years. It still has to be decided today. And the prize for the winners place in the Premier League next season. They will join Charlton and Man City. Chris Morgan got the ball out of harm's way. It's a corner kick to Ipswich Town, which Magilton will take. Once again, Tony Mowbray's taken up a back post position. He's posted on the edge of the 18-yard box. Here's Magilton. Curtis will not to certain. Jilton, Mowbray wants it played on his head again. It's a good one. Right, it's a stretch to get there. Clapham trying to pick out Magilton again. He's done well. Good control by Magilton. Naylor chests it down. Holland! Lovely move by Ipswich, full of invention, full of crisp passing and uh, an accurate shot in the end by Matt Holland. Chest down there by Richard Naylor to create the opening there for Matty Holland. Thomas brought Ipswich their second goal of the game. Shipley, lovely flick on towards Dyer. Hignett arriving here for Barnsley. Back to Dyer again. Oh, if he'd only connected properly. He would have seen a sensational Wembley goal. It was a lovely move involving Shipley, Dyer, and Hignett, and ending with that rather weak shot by Bruce Dyer, who has appeared in two playoff finals for Crystal Palace. Able to crown this appearance with a goal. And Naylor's through here for Ipswich. He scored! A mistake by Barnsley, and Richard Naylor scores his ninth goal of the season. Is it enough to point Ipswich Town towards the Premier League? He's going to be cautioned, I think, here for taking his shirt off in celebration. Flick on by Stewart. And what a cool finish by a player who didn't even start this game. Came on for David Johnson. Ipswich have come from behind. And six minutes into the second half, exactly the same stage of this half, where Barnsley scored in the last one. Naylor makes it 2-1. the tunnel end of the ground in absolute ferment now with cries of we're going up we're going up what a cool finish and a goal that a young man will remember for years and years the day he scored at Wembley to give Ipswich the lead sadly for this uh, over exuberant celebration, and he's been yellow carded. Morgan. How ironic that just a few seconds before that Ipswich goal, Dyer had a great chance to score for Barnsley.
Richard Naylor picked up a two-game ban earlier this season for a head-butting incident involving Darren Purse of Birmingham. And Naylor's after this one again. It's tucked out of harm's way by Chris Morgan. The skies are blue overhead. And every blue flag inside the stadium is being waved now. As Ipswich Town sends their long wait to return to the Premier League just might be coming to an end. Jilton. Oh, the goalkeeper was forced to make a catch then. Where did Barnsley go from here? Are well, they going to have to just put aside their defensive ambitions, or lack of ambitions perhaps, and try and squeeze the game? Their tactics of containment and counter-attack have to be ripped up now, and they have to attack it, switch and try to find an equaliser. Hignett. Morgan. That's the bookies' favourites, Ipswich Town in the lead, and they press forward looking for another goal. Richard Naylor has already scored one. Right. And Jermaine Wright almost makes it. Uh, a second Ipswich goal. Almost lazily swung a foot at the ball and almost diverted it into the corner of the goal. You do feel now that a two-goal lead for Ipswich would be good enough to kill off any lingering doubts they might have about failing to win, but I say again, these playoff finals have produced so many goals and so many unlikely incidents. Football really that defies scripting. It could be still a long, long way before we know whether Barnsley or Ipswich will ascend to the Premier League next season. Appleby of direction. Dyer. Bernard. Towards Hingnet, but Clapham is there, and the two little fellows will scrap that one out between them, and it ends up in a goal kick for Ipswich Town. Who does he bring on? Georgie Christoph, perhaps. Bulgarian, maybe Mike Sheeran. Certainly, he's going to have to throw an attacker into the equation. Tinkler. The Jilton with that imaginative flick didn't quite come off. Hitting it now, trying to lose his marker right. It really is a rich irony that Ipswich Town have looked so much more dangerous after they lost their striker, David Johnson, through injury. And it's another great ball in towards Naylor. Clapham. 3-1. Marcus Stewart scores for Ipswich. And that could be the goal which sends Ipswich into the Premier League. What a move, and a superbly heady goal by Marcus Stewart. The chairman of Ipswich Town can hardly contain his joy. They splashed out all that money to bring Marcus Stewart from Huddersfield. He scored here in the 95 playoff final and was on the losing side. This time he could well have scored the goal to take Ipswich up. What a well-directed header by Marcus Stewart. There was
was real conviction about him as he rose to get on the end of that cross from Jamie Clapham. Now, can Barnsley find an immediate reply? Dyer! And he fires it wide. Moment of danger here for Ipswich, but surely they won't let it slip now. Remember, Barnsley scored first, and the scoreline now reads Barnsley 1, Ipswich 3. Tinkler's coming off here for Barnsley. And it's Jeff Thomas coming on now for Barnsley. Thomas, who has been struggling with an knee injury of late. Former England international, who's a stranger to Wembley Stadium. But he has a huge job to do, and Dave Bassett now looking at a hefty defeat. And no doubt the Ipswich fans will tell you that they've won at Barnsley 6-1 this season in the league game. And there's cries from the Ipswich and of we want six, we want six. <laughs> Croft, humbled over that. Free kick to Ipswich Town. My mind goes back to that penalty at the end of the first half. That could well be the defining moment of this game when Richard Wright saved a penalty from Darren Bernard when the scores were 1-1. McJilton with a free kick. And almost former. Though Brionna scores his second of the game. He's injured himself. And throwing himself at the ball. There's a Barnsley defender which sort of fell across him in the end. Looks like a painful knee injury here for Tony Mowbray. The first team coach at Ipswich Town who's got his name on the score sheet, how important a goal that was. Great header by Stewart. And the Ipswich fans now are taunting the Barnsley supporters by saying it's just like watching Brazil. That's the famous Barnsley cry song they love to sing. A bit of an irony because Brazil were playing here on Saturday. What a great header that was by Marcus Stewart. Just trying to see whether Mabry is able to continue in the game. I think he uh, will want to carry on. Stop, I think he's about to come on. with a rather inaccurate cross. Just when you need a goal, it seems strange to bring off one of your strikers, but obviously Dave Bassett feels that his tyre isn't getting any change out of the Ipswich defence. Georgie Christoph who's on. Georgie Christoph who made some rather unkind comments about the women folk of Barnsley a couple of seasons back, which landed him in hot water. 
suggested that the uh, you know, folk of Barnsley the most attractive he'd ever come across. And, you know, getting a bit of ear bashing from the you know, female folk of South Yorkshire. Not happy too. Shipperly. And Ristoff's onto it. This is more like it by Barnsley. They're going to have to find superhuman effort now to try and get back into this game. They've got two goal cushion to try and puncture. Appleby. of some of these Barnsley players suggests a team who have already lost. Stewart's run here, just got in between the two defenders. Stewart again. What a great ball that is to Naylor. Oh, held the ball up delightfully there. Deserve better to be honest. Have no support inside the box. And his best to try and wait for the two teammates to arrive. Ristoff's on side. What a great tackle that was. Fine Mowbray. He's my man of the match. Even at the age of 36. Shipley who's had a quiet game. Shipley tackled. He has run into a brick wall every time he's trying to take on the Ipswich Town defence. Matty Holland now. Barnsley try to commit a few players forward, though having said that, there's only two up by the halfway line. It's a way things stand. Barnsley will be back in Division 1 next season. Ipswich Town will be playing in the Premier League. Having shoulders with the likes of Manchester United, Liverpool, Chelsea, Arsenal and Leeds, and that's where the revenue comes from, along with the fees paid by television companies to screen those games. Staff <laughs> is going to uh, take a chance there. Not much of a chance anyway. Well, Dave Bassett's been uh, twice a Wembley loser as a manager. George Burley making his first visit here capacity and the Barnsley fans and their expressions tell it in their own tale Schipperly Ristoff able to turn at the last moment and it's tidied up by Mark Venus Jermaine Wright game since replacing David Johnson midway through the first half. Chettle. with a terrific pass to try pick out Croft. 
picked up by Steve Chettle. Bernard, player who had that spot kick saved by Richard Wright at the end of the first half. Three, here's Matty Appleby. Morgan. Bernard. Appleby. This is more like it by Barnsley. Bernard! And he knows how close he came. Fellas, I think Richard Wright had the shot covered. And had it been any closer to his goal, he would have made the save. And you can see on the slow motion replay. It was fair effort by Bernard, who's obviously looking to return for his opportunity to get his name on the score sheet at the end of the first half. Edom coming on now for Barnsley. It's John Curtis who comes off. Edom, the captain of Barnsley. And in the event of Barnsley turning this one round and actually winning, he would go up as the winning captain, even though he didn't uh, start today's game. He would not come on. He's taken off his goals first. Pignett for Barnsley. Bernard. And the jump takes over for Ipswich. They really are in their stride and a some marvellous relaxed football now. We have to side who are leading by three goals to one. It's Magilton. And right underneath the referee's nose. Brown can have a few complaints about that. John Jilton, who scored three goals in the semi final second leg, to steer and switch towards Wembley. Which do here. Half an hour gone of the second half. Venus. Croft. By Shipley, but straight back to a blue shirt. Magilton. Croft. Stewart and Janine right now for Ipswich. As Ipswich play keep ball to the continual cheers of their fans. Magilton, Naylor. The ball out. And if the Ipswich are going to go up now, they will grace the Premier League with this sort of football. They are a footballing side in the true traditions of the word. Magilton with a cross. This is another one. Clapham hasn't got there. Yeah, they hasn't got there either with that shot. Mowbray. Naylor's on side here. And unable to finish off what had been a very, very good piece of control. 
Mowbray headed the ball forward here. Naylor ran from an onside position but was unable to hook the ball over the head of goalkeeper Kevin. Wrist off. Through the entire Ipswich defence. Hinton has it now. Now Barnes, they need a goal just to spark them into life. Shipperly. To say, one or two of the Barnsley players look like they're going through the motions at the moment. Capable of pulling back a two goal deficit. Appleby. Shipperley. My goodness, they needed a goal then. And Shipperley is denied by Richard Wright. but the final shot just met the power. Missed off. Back to the challenge with Tony Mowbray. Thomas, offside, Shipperley. Can Barnsley just find a goal here? Appleby. Plays inside the box. Celebrations so far, bearing in mind they're only 14 minutes from clinching a place in the Premier League next season. <laughs> Chipley got a bit of a whack on his head here from Venus. It was a clash of heads more than anything else. To Thomas. Penalty. Barnsley have been awarded their second penalty of the match. Jeff Thomas get inside here. And according to the referee, at least, Mowbray held him back. Change of penalty taker this time. It'll be Craig Hignett, and once again Richard Wright is facing a penalty. He saved Darren Bernard's penalty at the end of the first half. Here's Craig Hignett. And Barnsley are back in the game at 3-2. Maybe the playoff final isn't over just yet. It was a well-struck penalty by Craig Hignett, and one wonders Hignett taking the penalty instead of Bernard at the end of the first half, whether we'd have had a very different game by now. Well, can Barnsley find another goal now to take it to 3-3 and perhaps take us in towards extra time? Shipperly. Uh, free kick goes the other way this time. But suddenly those Barnsley players who hardly look, look like they cared about what was going to happen five minutes ago look all fired up now because they believe they can score again and take us into extra time. And looking at that slow motion replay, I think the referee got that absolutely right. 
So did Craig Ignett with that superb spot kick. Nothing wrong with that one. Wrist off. Just a goal in it now. In Ipswich Town's favour. 3 2. Certainly gives us a more interesting end to the game. I'm sure the Ipswich fans would see it that way. Bernard. Well, they've all missed it. Appleby. Oh, one or two nerves becoming apparent now in that Ipswich defence. Chettle. Bernard. Onside. Oh, what a miss there. For Georgie Christoph, he's offside. Just for a moment there, the flag stayed down and Ristoff. Well, it was just about offside, but it was desperately close. Well, that's level with the right back there. That could so easily have been 3-3. The more incidents like that occur, the more Ipswich Town are going to get nervy as they head towards the 90-minute mark. Ten minutes to go. Plenty of time for a goal for Barnsley. Maybe Ipswich can pill for one of their own here to finish the game as a contest. Barnsley look busy and they look lively as well. Chettle. Barnsley fans urging their side forward now. Bernard, wrist off. Surrounded by blue shirts. He's pulled it back here to Hignett. He shot his charge down. Bernard, it's all Barnsley at the moment. And suddenly all that Ipswich confidence has gone. Get the ball wide. Chettle, Shipperley. Oh, it just needed a touch as the ball was fired over across the six-yard box. And it was Nicky Eden who did the probing there. And suddenly Barnsley got behind their team. That was a dangerous moment there for Ipswich Town. Thomas tried to steal on in on the end of the cross, but nothing doing there for Barnsley. So she'll make her substitution shortly. It's Martin Royce uh, who will come on the Dutch international sign on loan from Vitesse. Marcus Stewart is the player who comes off. Martin Royce who is hoping to get a place in the starting 11 today. He says he'll sign for the club on a permanent basis if Ipswich go up. If they remain in Division 1, they'll return back to Holland. That appeared to be a foul. And it's whichever free kick they've taken it quickly. Can they stay on the side now? Royce. The dreams of scoring with one of his first touches there. I think he needed to lay the ball off to a gully. And this is Matty Appleby now for Barnsley. They're all charged up and ready to give it their all. Their season hangs. Eight minutes of this game. Can they score? Flag is up against Naylor. And you can see he was quite clearly in an onside position there. Great header by Venus. The 
anxiety written all over the faces of those Barnsley supporters. Here come their team again. Christoph, what a save by Wright. He's produced two marvellous stops in this game of international class. A point-blank header to deny Georgie Christoph what would have been the equalising goal. And still Barnsley come again. They were saying that Richard Wright had to produce something special at Wembley today to get into Kevin Keegan's squad for Euro 2000. I think he's done that. A penalty save and a marvellous stop there to deny Christoph. And he's come and collected that one as well. An England goalkeeper of the future, no doubt at all. That's fantastic, isn't it? Razor sharp. Appleby. Foul on Appleby. We're inside the final five minutes of the game. Richard Wright has kept Ipswich ahead. Shipperley. Back towards Bernard. Fouled. John McGreal, referee's assistant, with a very good view of this one. Yep, You're absolutely right. Four minutes to go, it's 3-2 to Ipswich Town. Ignit. They still haven't got it clear. They have now. Clapham gets it away. Appleby back into the danger zone. And Wright's got it. That's real heart in the mouth stuff there for Ipswich Town and their supporters and their management team. Christoph ducked. Ball struck his head. Was there a handball in there? Took a crazy bounce. Barnsley really have played well in trying to come back into this match, but time is now running out for them. And that's a ball given away to Matty Holland, and Ruysa wants it played forward quickly, but Holland wants to waste time and run it in towards the corner flag. This is a time-wasting exercise. Naylor, Croft, Wright, Magilton. To Mowbray. And it's which know that last a blue ball has possession, a blue shirt rather, has possession of the ball. And a mistake might let in Royce here. And the referee will not give a third penalty in this match as Royce went down. Clumsy challenge. Hanging it now. It's Bernard. Two and a half minutes left. That's all that separates Ipswich now and a place in the Premier League. Nail, nail biting stuff. Two minutes to go. You can see one supporter telling his he's down that uh, there's not long to go. Ipswich player down injured. It really has been another entertaining game. All these playoff finals bring their own sort of drama, and this has been no exception. Barnsley taking the lead. Ipswich equalising. A penalty kick to Barnsley, saved by. Richard Wright and then a couple of it switch turn goals, Barnsley come back into it again and Stream, the player who's been injured. 
Jermaine Wright is off and uh, Fabian Vilnius will come on in his place. We heard the public address announcer saying that uh, today's attendance 73,000. worth to be honest I think that means five minutes of stoppage time to be added on because we're very close to the 90 minute mark now neighbor Royce is onside this could seal it now for Ipswich Town they're going up. It's all over. All the doubt has been taken away from Ipswich Town. He's scored a goal which will secure him a contract at the club next season. Barnsley were pushing up here. Royce has stayed on the halfway line to make sure he stayed onside. And that's a quite devastating finish. Superb shot by Royce. And that ends it surely as a contest now, unless we have a quite remarkable couple of minutes. It has happened before at Wembley. Nail up. We're in the midst of five minutes of stoppage time. But the Barnsley fans are already beginning to make their way towards the exit. No, oh, no, the referee's blown his whistle. And the two Hipswich fans thought that was it. <laughs> Making Terry Highbrook thought it was funny. Already oh, played two minutes of stoppage time, still three minutes left. Appleby. Shipperley. Jilton. Royster again wants the ball. Jilton. Neymar. Jilton again. Bit of nonsense here. Thomas getting involved. Thomas felt that uh, Ipswich were just taking their time a bit too lackadaisically then. But it just makes it a bit harder for Barnsley. One end of the ground is all blue and white flags and scarves being held aloft. The other is supporters sitting rather forlornly and watching on. George Burley, a winner here with Ipswich Town in the FA Cup final of 78. He's about to taste success again. Croft has been injured here and Appleby now and Royce getting involved. This is all to do with Barnsley's frustration. To be honest, Barnsley had their chance, that controversial penalty decision at the end of the first half was the point where Barnsley had a chance to 
take the lead for a second time. I wonder what would have happened had that penalty got him. Naylor's after this one. Goal kick. Crofts back on the field. Royce has made his impact since coming on as a substitute. Chettle now. Barnsley offside. Referee allows the advantage and tells Richard Wright to get on with the game. They're just so excited. We've played nearly five minutes of stoppage time. The referee will blow his whistle any second now. And Ipswich Town will be back in the Premier League. Appleby. Hignett. Thomas. Hignett again. That's a goal kick. Now the referee has said corner kick. Barnsley snatch a consolation goal. I think the referee's going to pick the ball up here. It's all over. Ipswich Town are back in the big time. Their six year wait to return to the Premier League is all over. It really has been a marvellous performance by them. the Suffolk club who have so many admirers throughout the English game and beyond now have a team worthy of playing in the Premier League their playoff record before the season was quite simply awful but they weren't awful today despite going a goal behind they stuck to their guns and even when they had a penalty Oh, there's uh, Kieran Dyer, the former Ipswich player, now at Newcastle. Splendid moment for him. Even when they had that penalty awarded against him at the end of the first half, they managed to find a save from Richard Wright. It's very hard to lose at Wembley. Barnsley head back to Division One and have to start all over again. Dave Bassett, who has twice been a Wembley loser as a manager with Palace and Sheffield United, and he's now lost here with Barnsley. He's done a marvellous job to turn round the football club and make them into a team who are capable of going up. But quite simply, they came up, they came up today against a stronger team. Then he said that it switched down were the best footballing team in this division and now they join Charlton and Manchester City in the Premier League next season promoted from Division 1 Richard Wright produced two outstanding stops today the one from the penalty and that terrific save to deny Georgie Fristoff Tony Mabry who scored that splendid header, the first goal for Ipswich of the afternoon. <laughs> Tony Mabry has been named man of the match, but I suspect it was a close thing between he and Richard Wright, the goalkeeper. It's just like watching your worst nightmares, never mind Brazil. Absolutely nothing for the losers, no medals. Just the winners are invited up to the Royal Box.
George Burley has created a side which has played such imaginative football. And there is the playoff final trophy. Matty Holland, who dreamt about this moment from being a schoolboy, who has not missed a game since July 97, has always been there on the team sheet. The chief guest for this playoff final, Dr Brian Davis, the chief executive of the Nationwide Building Society, who sponsor this division, shakes hands with Matty Holland, gives him his winner's medal and Ipswich Town have their hands on the trophy and are heading for the Premier League next season congratulations to everybody associated with the club the message is crystal clear Every one of these players have worked their socks off, not just today, but over the last nine months. And the safest pair of hands in the team belongs to Richard Wright. A special cheer for him. He really has been instrumental in Ipswich Town's success today. Splendid goal scored by Marcus Stewart, who holds up the trophy now. Similar story for Richard Naylor, he's got a great goal as well. Jamie Clapham gets his hands on the trophy. Keith Brannigan, the reserve goalkeeper, and there's the manager. And that's what it means to him, George Burley. Taking him a while to get back to Wembley and the Royals box but he's back chairman and manager are wreathed in smiles this victory will bring millions of pounds to this football club modest man but very proud man and he's got a team playing the sort of football which will grace the Premier League and as Ipswich Town celebrates we leave you with the story of the first division playoff final a handsome win for Ipswich Town who go to the Premier League. The final score is Barnsley 2, Ipswich Town 4.